Greetings, thanks for joining me for another edition of Electric Avenue's YouTube updates. Uh, this will be one of the last updates for 2023. I'm doing the new releases in store for December 15th, 2023. And uh, yeah, if you were paying attention the other day, you might have seen that I posted my video of my top 20 choices for my favorite albums of the year and if you are interested and you've got an hour to burn go back and watch that video it was update 165 i think so um and i'll sort of give one thing away that my number one choice of the year was this some people are going what's that sparks the girl is crying in her latte and uh i highly recommend it if you're a sparks fan you need to listen to this album and probably the last four or five. Um, they're all great in their own way. And uh, yeah, it's a fun record. But I think the thing that's really interesting about it in a, in a certain sense is that there's a certain amount of humor in this album. And I can't remember who had an album called Does Humor Belong in Music? And uh, sometimes um, humor can seem like trite, off-putting, less than creatively um, sort of uh, highbrow and uh, it's not so serious obviously um, there are some serious moments on this album for sure and I think there's a lot of social commentary on it um, but yes I think humor does belong in music and uh, it gets kind of uh, pushed aside a lot um, it's like the Weird Al effect you know it's like do people take this guy seriously because there's humor involved in it um, but there's also a lot of really interesting, not just social commentary, but historic references, and uh, it's a it's um, a deep album. And then there are moments where it's sort of almost like Dadaist type humor, where it's like they're just repeating things or they're saying things that seem very kind of random. And um, but that's part of the beauty of this band, uh, brothers duo. And I'm I'm proud to say that this was it, you know one of my absolute favorite records of theirs after 26 albums and 50 some years in the business and uh so go check it out and it's not for everybody honestly that's why it's my personal favorite and not uh, not something that i would say hey you gotta go get that for everybody but maybe hey you should go get that sparks album um all right so this week's new releases and i think i should mention this because this was sort of a late arrival this came in up last late last week it's the new chick korea electric band box set uh this is complete studio albums 1986 to 91 so uh runs about 200 uh on vinyl unedited for the first time ever meticulously restored fully recharged originally cut down and resequenced to fit on single LPs when they were first released on vinyl. This limited edition box set finally restores all five of the original Electric Band albums to their original length and running order exactly as Chick envisioned them. Um, it's a, each album is a two LP set in deluxe gatefold jackets. Um, it also includes limited stuff from Chick's archives. Uh, this includes the albums Chick Korea, Electric Band, Light Years, Eye of the Beholder, Beneath the Mask, and Inside Out. So if you're a Chick fan and you like that period, you might be interested in looking for that. Uh, they're not things that I generally have around the store unless you want to special order them. Uh, okay, <clears throat> something new from this week. Um, we have the new Black Crows box set. This is uh, Southern Harmony uh, and Musical Companion. This is the second Black Crows album, at least the second one that um, most people are aware of. And uh, this features, this is a CD set actually. R this runs about $100. It's three discs uh, with previously unreleased music live in Houston, Texas, February 1993. Um, there's a concert and four more studio recordings, includes hymn book and four lithographs. Um, there's a disc of, it's the album, then there's outtakes and b-sides, which is nine tracks, and then uh, the concert on the third disc. So that's the CD version. 
there is a vinyl newly remastered from the original master tapes. Uh, it's interesting, it's on one LP, so it's actually five tracks per side and uh, very reasonably, reasonably priced. Um, another sort of reissue this week in the rock uh, realm, Godsmack, their self-titled debut produced by Sully Erna. Uh, this is a two LP edition. Um, I don't know. I'm assuming this is the black final edition. It doesn't say anything about it on the cover, but new Godsmack reissue. Um, let's see. Also, a, this is not really a reissue. This is a new Nick Cave and Warren Ellis live album called Australian Carnage. The last Nick Cave album was called Carnage. And this is live at the Sydney Opera House. And I think the picture sort of says it all, the sort of inner angst that um, they're giving. But it's eight tracks here and uh, one LP. And um, it's sort of a mix of like more recent stuff. Ghosting, Waiting for You, uh, White Elephant, Carnage, Bright Horses. Uh, recorded live December of 2022, so just a year ago. I th believe that Nick is done or almost finished with the new Bad Seeds album, so that's on the way. And um, I should also mention this is new, a little U2 7-inch for Atomic City. Uh, their recent single um, in conjunction with their Sphere performance, and this is on a photoluminescent transparent 7-inch vinyl includes bespoke etching on side B. Um, so there you go. You too. Uh, okay, new reissues this week. Got some Blue Notes, Grant Green, Green Street. This is a Blue Note classic. The other one this week, because they come in twos usually, Sonny Rollins, Nukes Time. Uh, so these are the two new, and these are you know, remastered by Kevin Gray at Coherent Audio and uh, two of the most famous Blue Note records, I think. There's the back of Sonny Rollins featuring Wynton Kelly on piano and Philly Joe Jones on drums mainly. And the Grant Green is uh, just him with Ben Tucker on bass and Derek Bailey, uh, Dave Bailey, sorry, on drums, Derek Bailey. All right. Moving right along, another jazz reissue, Art Blakey, Orgy in Rhythm. This is uh, put out by the Destination Moon label, and uh, there was supposed to be another from them this week, John Coltrane's Bahia, and that either didn't ship or they didn't have enough of them yet. But uh, this is um, featuring uh, Blakey's unfettered drumming, accompanied by Latin percussionist Potato Valdez, Potato Valdez and Evilio Quintero with Herbie Mann on flute. So, uh, but there's other people on this too playing uh, congas, timbales, uh, maracas, and tree log. Ray Bryant is on piano. So um, it's a pretty like percussive album. Um, go sort of also from the Blue Note catalog, but it's interesting. Uh, I don't know. It looks very blue notey, uh, but it's on Destination Moon, so maybe they've mocked it up to look. It's hard sometimes to know what's official and what's not. Last week, I believe I showed this new Bill Evans, which is Conversations with Myself. This is um, put out by this uh, Elemental Records, and it's um, overdubbed like three different performances of Bill Evans, so he's sort of playing. Uh, along with himself and the other Bill Evans that comes out this week on Elemental is Bill Evans Trio with Symphony Orchestra. And this is fascinating too, uh, also put out by Elemental. Uh, this features music by Bach, Chopin, Scriabin, Granados, Faure, and Evans, conducted by Klaus Ogerman. Uh, David Foster, of all people, is quoted here saying, I was a teenager when I first listened to Bill Evans, and he, along with Oscar, Reason, Oscar Peterson, is the reason I played piano. So now I guess we know who to blame. Uh, Bill Evans is a wonderful and sometimes overlooked album. Uh, Bill Evans with Symphony Orchestra. 
So um, this is interesting because it's kind of classically in nature, but because it's done with the jazz trio, it's a completely unique take on it. Both of these are very unique sort of Bill Evans recordings. And Elemental's been doing some pretty good um, pretty good work so far. Um, also in sort of reissue, this is going more towards the rock people and the hip hop people, but uh, Mike Shinoda's Fort Minor featuring the, uh, the album The Rising Tide, um, Shinoda being of Linkin Park, and this is uh, his 2005 debut album, Deluxe Edition. Um, both of them, I believe, feature the bonus tracks, but this is a Zoetrope vinyl picture disc, so when you play it, it's going to sort of make patterns and stuff on the turntable. A little more pricey than the regular one, but take your pick, you know. One is more limited. I would say the Zoetrope is more, more limited. The Zoetrope things are pretty cool. There was a, a Nightmare Before Christmas one that was really neat that had like the characters sort of it's almost like watching a um, an animated like uh, uh, comic strip or something like that on your turntable. Another reissue this week, Ed Sheeran's X. This is on clear vinyl, part of Atlantic's 75th anniversary edition. So not much else to say about that. Uh, Willie Nelson, live at the Hollywood Bowl. And... Uh, this is um, volume one of the highlights from the legendary shows. Willie celebrates his 90th birthday with an all-star cast, 21 tracks spread across two LPs. Uh, this features performances from Billy Strings, um, Margot Price, Lyle Lovett, Beck, Dave Matthews, Lucas Nelson, Nathaniel Rateliff, Avett Brothers, Lumineers, Tyler Childers, Leon Bridges, Tom Jones, Miranda Lambert, Chris Stapleton, Cheryl Crow, George Strait, Keith Richards, and an all sing. It's kind of neat. Nice tribute to Willie. There's a CD of that that hasn't shown up yet, and that actually has um, even more material on it. It's like a triple disc or something like that. It's all of the concerts. Um, also in the country world, Roseanne Cash. This is a reissue, 30th anniversary of her album, The Wheel. Uh, this is sort of an iconic album for Roseanne because it sort of really signaled her kind of coming into a, a different era. Uh, this features an unreleased 1993 live performance from Austin City Limits and uh, new liner notes from Roseanne Cash, a uh, 2LP edition. So you can kind of see there how much stuff is on it. So Roseanne country fans take notes of that and Willie fans too of his. Um, I haven't seen this movie yet. I'm looking forward to it. It's supposed to be great killers of the flower moon based on a true story. This was directed by um, uh, Martin Scorsese. It's an Apple original film. Uh, music composed by Robbie Robertson who left us this year um, and Obviously, Scorsese was a big fan of Robbie. So that's new on vinyl. Um, let's see. On jazz, we have John Schofield, Uncle John's Band. And this is a new vinyl. This might be a new release, too. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't see the CD of this uh, available. But it's two LPs, and it features Uncle John's Band, the uh, Grateful Dead song. Also features Mr. Tambourine Man, uh, Bob Dylan, uh, Budo, Miles Davis, um, Old Man, Neil Young. So there's a few covers somewhere, uh, Leonard Bernstein, and the rest are all Schofield originals. This is kind of a mix, but if you like, uh, it's uh, basically John on guitar with double bass and uh, Vincente Archer on double bass and Bill Stewart on drums. So there's that. Uh, and then Samandi, uh, second time around, this is a reissue of the second album. Um, 1973 was when this released, uh, when this was released, featuring Crochet, Fug, and Genevieve, pressed on limited edition transparent green vinyl. Uh, so it's sort of like funk, soul, jazz sort of stuff. 
Um, a few CDs and that sort of thing that I have. Uh, there's the Porcupine Tree DVD uh, finally came out as a, a Blu-ray and a DVD. Uh, their concert from the Zigadrome, Zigadrome Arena in Amsterdam, uh, July of 2022, when they did their sort of reunion album, Closure, which they say is their last album. Um, this, I have not seen this, the vinyl come in yet, but it's a new Eels collection. Eels, so good, essential Eels. This is their... Um, sort of volume two greatest hits 2007 to 2020 and also a record store day uh release that's now on cd amos lee uh honeysuckle switches which is all songs of lucinda williams so there's that um and then i wanted to give a few sort of like gift ideas and things um i think you know i was talking to somebody yesterday a little bit about taylor swift and um, it came up the fact that like Taylor Swift, um, which version do you get? Do you get Taylor's version of things or do you get the originals? Well, we have Taylor's version of 1989 and the original version of 1989. And the customer said Taylor's version is the only one that matters because the money's actually going to her and the other one, even though it's the original is not, um, you know, the original is actually cheaper. I don't, I don't know. I feel like uh, maybe there's room for both in the world, but you know, it seems like Taylor's doing fine. She probably doesn't even need me doing a shout out right here, but, um, but I did one anyway. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> other things that I think, um, oh, hello there. Other things I think that um, you might want to sort of check out as gift ideas. We just got more copies of Cheryl Crow's Tuesday Night Music Club back in stock. And this was such a iconic album when it came out in the early 90s. It really launched her career. And it was a sort of controversial because of the background history with the producers and the writers and such. But uh, she made good on it, I think. And it was produced by Bill Bottrell. It had um, the hits, uh, All I Want to Do was the big one, uh, the first one. And then also Run Baby Run was a single. Leaving Las Vegas was a pretty big hit. Strong Enough and Can't Cry Anymore were also big hits. Uh, it ended with a really kind of nice sort of soul-searchy, earthy track called I Shall Believe. Um, sort of a definitive album of the 90s. So you might want to go down that path. Another album um, you probably saw last week if you were watching, and maybe you didn't, but there was a whole series of Fiona Apple reissues that came out. And um, I'm not going to get into, like, you know, any personal feelings about it here. Um, but I do love all of them. And uh, this one is one that I think it's a little overlooked. And I really like this album, Extraordinary Machine. Um, it has, uh, there were two different versions of it that came out at the time. But uh, this features, um, Oh Sailor was sort of a, the single from it. Um, but there were other songs that were great. Um, Not About Love is great. Timps is great. Um, so anyway, just so you're aware, there are four Fiona Apples out there now, um, but some of them are already running out of stock or out of stock because they were just that much in demand. Uh, Sinead O'Connor's The Lion and the Cobra. Uh, there were three of her albums that just got reissued. This one, Am I Not Your Girl, and which is the covers album, and Universal Mother, which is the one that followed um, the big one. I do not want what I haven't got with um, Nothing Compares to You. This one has my favorite Sinead song, really. Troy is just incredible. Um, but also Mandinka is on here, and I Want Your Hands on Me was a, kind of another MTV staple. Um, and there is a best of Sinead O'Connor, too. There's like a Greatest Hits album, which is actually really good in covering most of the early bases of her career. Uh, Pearl Jam Versus. This is one that they just reissued oh, a month or so ago, 30th anniversary edition, uh, pressed at 45. So it's on two LPs uh, for higher fidelity, um, supposedly, but three songs aside. But uh, if you really want a good sounding version of, of that album and not just an average one, maybe look into that. I don't know. 
I, I don't make these things. So, you know, I just basically am, I am the facilitator. Uh, Led Zeppelin 4. This is the one that came out recently on Clear Vinyl. And this is their fourth album. Um, remastered and produced by Jimmy Page. So it's, I believe, the same pressing that came out a few years back, but it's um, pressed on clear vinyl as part of that Atlantic 75th anniversary. Fleetwood Mac's Rumors Live. I think so many people have rumors that not that many people have rumors live. So if you're getting a little like, I've heard rumors so much I never need to hear it again. Maybe this is the way you should be hearing it for a while. I don't know. But this is a double, double album. And um, yeah, it features all of Rumors plus a couple other songs from uh, the earlier record. Uh, so check that out. These are just like so many great gift ideas that I have sitting around the store. I could go on like this for hours probably, but Jimi Hendrix, uh, this is Hollywood Bowl, August 1967 where he infamously was opening for Mamas and the Papas and nobody really knew who he was or cared and he was getting sort of meager applause but he kept like rocking it out and these are limited uh, numbered 5,000 I don't have very many of these left and once they're gone I think they're gone uh, this includes Sgt. Pepper's uh, his cover of um, uh, Like a Rolling Stone uh, also Wild Thing Catfish Blues, um, it does have Foxy Lady, uh, Purple Haze, Fire, so if you're a Hendrix fan, I think you need that before it gets too late. Speaking of other great soul rock uh, people from the past, uh, Prince, Diamonds and Pearls, I love this cover, this sort of foil cover. Um, the original cover of this uh, on vinyl was just sort of a blue picture of them, so this is a unique cover, and um, in the box set, it's a color photograph of this. Uh, the original was uh, the hologram CD cover, which uh, they don't seem to be reissuing that anywhere, but this is the closest thing to that, which is sort of this foil replicated type cover. Um, any of you who watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer know that this one, uh, Pearl, became Miss Calendar. Uh, she was a dancer for Prince first. I don't know. Many people don't know that. But anyway, this uh, album is Prince's second highest selling record album. And a lot of people don't know that either. It's right behind Purple Rain. It's the second biggest seller. Uh, even though some of the others maybe have more critical acclaim. This featured the number one song, Cream, top three song, Diamonds and Pearls. Um, big club single, Get Off. Uh, also, Money Don't Matter Tonight. Um, I love Thunder. I think it's great. This is a, an album that is a little later <clears throat> for Prince. This is like 1990, 91, 91. And so it's a little bit um, like he's changed his band. He's changed his sound a little bit. He's trying to stay current. Uh, in the box set, there are some songs that kind of get into New Jack Swing territory. And thankfully, he didn't really do that on his albums because I think that it was it wasn't as successful as um, what the songs on the album are and this is a very strong album from him so shows that he was willing to sort of take a little chance on rap too after he'd sort of um, kind of derided it a little bit before that um, he just sort of was like well I guess I'll try it and he did all right um, people are also harsh on that fact but uh, new Neil Young album, Before and After, and this is a uh, new live solo acoustic performances. So this is actually a new Neil Young album um, featuring old material that he's doing live. So it's basically a live acoustic record. Um, and then speaking more of the older stuff, Grateful Dead, Without a Net, this got reissued recently. This is a three LP set recorded live. 1989. Uh, I have a couple of those left. Uh, Grateful Dead also built to last another reissue. Um, the final studio album featuring Foolish Heart, Just a Little Light, and Picasso Moon. There are two more Grateful Dead albums being reissued in January. Um, I'm trying to remember. One is Terrapin Station. I know that. 
and uh, the other one might be um, whatever their last out in the dark maybe their last album with a touch of gray so anyway there's always Grateful Dead around Bob Dylan this was a new record that came out um, in the like early fall uh, 14 newly recorded songs including Forever Young I'll Be Your Baby Tonight It's All Over Now Baby Blue and more so three sides of music and an etching this is another one that's sort of like the Neil Young where he's kind of like doing new versions of old songs um, so technically a new Bob Dylan album I think these artists at some point people just start sleeping on them because they put a lot of records out but uh, yeah there was new stuff some of my favorite reissues of this year uh, Tom Waits Rain Dogs I mean this album had been um, wanted as a reissue for so long and here it is newly remastered with uh, Waits and his wife Kathleen Brennan audio sourced from the original production master tape restored album packaging and the one that I was really super thrilled with finally getting a copy of was Bone Machine which I think is one of his best albums and um, it's sort of kind of was impossible to find unless you wanted to pay a fortune on Discogs uh, this features Going Out West, Dirt in the Ground uh, Earth Died Screaming, A Little Rain and that feel which I think featured Keith Richards on it. So, um, all right, there was a bunch of REM stuff that came out recently. Up was reissued and Reveal was reissued. And these albums, I really like both of them. This one is very kind of Beach Boys-y. This one is more like the upbeat side of the Beach Boys, whereas this is more like the downbeat side. They really are both kind of influenced by that. This one's more summary reveal. I love uh, Imitation of Life, I think is one of their best um, sort of not talked about so much singles. And uh, this one featured Oh Lotus and uh, At My Most Beautiful, Day Sleeper. Um, so they're kind of like bookends of REM sound at that era. Reveal um, seemed to be sort of a one LP sort of uh, more affordable uh, up is a little more expensive as a 2 LP edition but you can get both of those now and another REM that was just reissued that people kind of didn't notice was uh, Automatic for the People got reissued as a um, on yellow vinyl a limited indie, indie store exclusive so got a couple of those left uh, The Who Who's Next this is a half speed master edition of the classic featuring Baba O'Reilly won't get fooled again behind blue eyes one of the who's best albums and in a really clear sounding half speed master uh, a couple other things that came out recently Steely Dan there was this whole uh, they've done UHQR versions of these so you can spend 125 150 bucks for really super high quality version of these or these very good Bernie Grunman remasters uh, which is Asia uh, there were a few of them Gaucho just recently came out uh, this one features Hey 19 um, and I think most people know what Asia sounds like but um, if you don't go listen to Asia <laughs> you're missing out uh, a John Coltrane reissue called The Cats I love this album cover it actually has cats on it and this is from the late 50s featuring Kenny Burrell Tommy Flanagan and Idris Suleiman and uh, it's just a great sort of jazz combo there's uh, six players on it and it's a classic and it's John before he got a little far out there um, let's see we've got a couple other things here I want to show Sorry, this is just like, I want to give you sort of a little year-end wrap-up of some of the... Oh, boy, it's Whamageddon. <laughs> uh, Wham. The singles, Echoes from the Edge of Heaven. This is a 2LP thing that came out in the summer when the Wham documentary came out. This does feature two versions of Last Christmas, the single and the pudding mix. And um, I kind of am like a little torn on the Whamageddon thing. Well, I think it's fun and it kind of like gives George a little bit of like uh, 
press time and whatever. It's also a little bit mean spirited. I feel like I I'm not a fan of the Mariah song, the Christmas song. So I mean it's okay, but I hear it everywhere. And this one I hear everywhere too, but it doesn't drive me crazy the same way that that one does. Um, I felt like hers was all about chart position and making money and whatever. And this is just a song that's just around because people love it. And um, in a year where he's inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, finally, to kind of be bitching and moaning about hearing the song, it almost comes off a little bit as like, um, I don't know, like they're canceling another gay icon for some reason. I don't, I don't know. I don't really like, I have not participated in Whamageddon. So um, that's my brief commentary on that. I'm not going to share any more about it, but maybe leave, leave your feelings in the comments. Um, I know some of you will be like, it deserves to be canceled. <laughs> it's been played a lot. I get that. Uh, Duran Duran, another 80s uh, iconic band, Dance Macabre. This was their Halloween fa flavored album that came out last month and a half ago. And this has a lot of cover songs on it too. Um, uh, obviously, uh, things like Ghost Town, Painted Black, super lonely freak but it also and psycho killer uh, but it also featured things like bury a friend which was a billy eilish song and then some of their own songs black moonlight's an incredible single there's a great video for it that's out now uh directed by jonas ockerlund of all people who used to do like madonna and prodigy videos um and uh, that's a really great sort of new effort also andy taylor um who's sort of back from cancer and then pop trash their sort of overlooked album from uh like 2000 uh which was just a trio at the time um and this uh was i remember when this came out and like nobody even knew it was coming out and it's like we got a cd in the store and i was like what they have a new record um so uh ho they were signed to hollywood at the time which uh, is like disney's label and they totally like gave them no promotion so you can finally hear that album if you're looking for it. Um, I'm glad to see this back in stock. LCD Sound System, The Long Goodbye. They're live at Madison Square Garden concerts um, from a few years back. And this is an incredible collection of records. And um, so these, there's a few of these back on the shelf. There's not too many, but, um, but they're out. And uh, to sort of wrap things up here, uh, Vince Guaraldi, the Charlie Brown Christmas. This is the gold foil edition with the embossed cover. Um, I believe the record is black. So there's been other issue, other versions of this that were uh, color vinyl and the covers were just white. And in this case, the cover is sort of more uh, flashy, <laughs> but the music is great. It's my favorite Christmas album to just put on and just relax to. And um, another great Christmas album. We just got a couple in. Uh, very special Christmas. <clears throat> it's like my favorite Christmas album of the 80s. And uh, even though there's some things on there that I'm like, eh, I don't really care so much for certain tracks. Um, there's some that, like The Pretenders, doing Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, uh, Make Me Cry Every Time, uh, Madonna, Santa Baby, U2 Christmas, Baby Please Come Home, Run DMC, Christmas in Hollis, a total classic. Uh, Eurythmics, Winter Wonderland, I love. Pointer Sisters, their Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Uh, Sting, Gabriel's Message. Uh, and Springsteen's Merry Christmas, Baby. And Whitney does a great Do You Hear What I Hear, too. So, love that record. And uh, finally, a King Gizzard album. There were so many King Gizzard albums all the time. The Silver Chord, this is sort of the abbreviated version of their super extended new uh, um electronic -y sort of prog album but uh this is a great sort of way to kind of sum up the king gizzard year i think all right guys thanks i sort of raced through that i said it was going to be shorter well it's a little shorter uh and hey have have a happy healthy holiday and um our cat is um doing better in a way she's out of heart failure at the moment but she still has a cardiac cardiac condition now so we have to watch that, make sure that she's getting her food. It's a, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. 
And um, so we're just hoping because they said, well, you know, worst case scenario, she'll have six months to a year, best case four years. Um, and she's already nine. So not not old, but it's uh, it's been a lot. So this has been a very trying and tragic year in a lot of ways. And there have been a lot of good things, too. So um, there may be another wrap-up video before the end of the year. But uh, these were just some holiday ideas. So thank you for joining me. And y'all have a great weekend and a great holiday. And uh, we'll see you next time. Okay? Peace to everybody and love to everybody. Thanks.